I think one of the biggest fears is judgment. You know, we're, you're afraid of what other people are going to think. Nobody cares. Like we're so concerned of what other people think that we 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 are so afraid to truly show who we are. But in reality, it's like people will maybe point and laugh for a second, and then they'll go back to thinking about all the things that they have to do in their day and their own anxiety and their fears and their worries. And like you know, they're not going to remember. Um, and it's like if you spend your whole life. Stopping yourself from truly showing who you are, you're gonna live in fear, and you're gonna actually have more anxiety and stress, and you're gonna probably hold it in your body than if you just did the thing. Welcome to the Power Plant Body Podcast. My name is Taylor, and this show is focused on self development. I found in my own life, as well as the lives of my clients that I've worked with, that it's human nature to focus on goals in one area of life, or maybe two areas of life if you're lucky to the detriment of the other areas of your life. For this reason, there's a tool that I use with my clients called the Goal Wheel that is specifically designed to shed light on how you might be preventing yourself from living the fullest life possible. In a nutshell, the Goal Wheel is a circle drawn on a piece of paper that's been divided into eight quadrants. The eight quadrants are family and friends, romance, fun and recreation, health and fitness, finances, personal growth and spirituality, career, and physical environment. Basically, you give yourself a score between one and 10 for each of these areas of your life, and that allows you to see where you're excelling and putting your attention, but it also shows you the areas of your life that you're currently neglecting. The areas of life that we neglect are often the areas that we need to work on the most, and that's exactly why I started this podcast, to share insights from teachers who are experts in one or more of these areas of the goal wheel. Each interview is meant to inspire you to take action in one of those areas so that you can live a more fulfilled and balanced life. To get your hands on a free copy of the Goal Wheel PDF so that you can use it to create meaningful goals and take steps to achieve them, head over to powerplantbody.com forward slash free dash tools. You'll find a bunch of other free tools and resources there as well. It's unfortunate, but modern society celebrates hustle culture to such an extent that it largely represses the playful, carefree, authentic expression that would otherwise come naturally to the human experience. Rachel Frank is a breath of fresh air as she is someone who made the terrifying decision to be authentically playful and weird despite what others think. She got comfortable with being uncomfortable and it's led her down a path of personal growth and amazing experiences. Rachel has a background in the music industry, which she's still very much involved with, but she now coaches others to embrace their inner playfulness through dance, movement, games, and dressing up. In her words, she's a spiritual fun coach. Rachel was an absolute pleasure to speak with because I know that I could definitely use some more playfulness in my own life, and her unique and fresh approach seems so incredibly inviting. My hope is that what Rachel has to say inspires you to be more playful and let your inner weirdness out, regardless of what others might think. So without any further delay, I bring you my conversation with Rachel Frank. All right, well, Rachel, I appreciate you being on the podcast. I, I, I had you on because... Um, or I wanted to have you on. I'm so grateful that you decided to be on because you strike me as someone who takes life very lightly and you're, you're having fun. And I feel like it's, 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 it's probably easier than we like to think it is to have fun these days, but it seems like people take themselves far too seriously in life and, uh, to the detriment of their enjoyment of all the things that they have, all the people that they have around them and the situations that they find themselves in. So in the totally. goal wheel, that idea of fun and fun and um, recreation, I couldn't think of a better person to to get insights into that than you. And I'd invite you to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what you do and your passions. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me here. This is really, really cool. I appreciate being on the podcast. And yeah, my name's Rachel. I um, 
I identify as a spiritual fun coach. And so, I mean, my goal really is just to raise the vibration of joy in the world and get people not to take themselves so seriously because part of life is having fun. And I think we get so set in like these goals and ambitions and, you know, we don't see the big picture. And part of it is just having fun along the way of getting to those goals. And if you don't (laughs) take time to enjoy yourself, then you're not going to want to continue making progress. Um, Yeah. So, and I mean, I'm really passionate about music. Um, I worked in the music industry for seven years and I also, (laughs) this is goofy, but I like to dress up in costumes. Mm -hmm. And so I've always just been like a a jokester. I Mm -hmm. I can show you them in a little bit, but I have a giant (laughs) full body panda mascot costume (laughs) that I dress up in. And I've been on stages like Snoop Dogg and the Flaming Lips and Arcade Fire. I'll get into that later. Um, And then, yeah, so I, I, I just got into meditation and spirituality and just like connecting to my higher self. And I just really want to make it fun for the people I want to help. Um, Cause I know the healing process can be hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. It can be painful to look at yourself and look at those parts of yourself that are, you know, you just, Ooh, it gives you that like, you know, feeling you're like, Oh gosh, this is, this is, uh, this is why I do the things that I do that I don't want to do anymore. <laughs> so, mm. you know, yeah. So I just want to make it fun for people. That's yeah. I love that because the, the inner work is often scary, right? It's easy to look yes. out. It's easy to forget that it exists. It's easy to forget that, Oh, you know what? There's, there's like a wound there that I should probably look at and get some help with, or maybe, uh, sitting still and, and working on meditation is something that would benefit my, my life, but I'm not really, I don't like sitting alone with my thoughts. It's not the most enjoyable experience. There's a lot, there's a lot of heaviness to that for people. And it sounds like you bring lightness to it and, uh, an ability to enjoy the process through fun and, um, yeah, it, you use the word holistic, right? Like you, the, 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 taking the good with the bad, the bad with the good. Am I getting that right? Yeah. Yeah. I, it's yeah, pretty much. I mean, I guess i working in the music industry for seven years mm-hmm. and, you know, I had my own demons and like mm-hmm. trauma and things. And this past year, it all came up <laughs> mm-hmm. and it was hard. Like it was really hard to, to mm-hmm. look at myself. And, um, I mean, I could just tell you the story about how the ant thing came about if yeah, please. I can just start. So it's, it's kind of a funny story, <laughs> but that's why, you know, I think everything's <laughs> kind of funny. So it actually started mm, maybe two years ago. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I went to Big Bear with some friends. We were just joking around. And I'd be like, how funny would it be if we made a movie about this ant? And this ant falls in love with this hot surfer dude. And then, like, you know, they fall in love. And then the hot surfer guy is like, I can't be with you. You're an ant. And, <laughs> and then the ant's like, I don't understand. We're in love. And then, like, that was it. That was, like, the end of the story. And mm. so I thought it was such a good idea. I was, so I bought this, like, ant costume. And whatever. A year later... Mm-hmm. I had this little love thing with a guy. Didn't work out. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of funny because he like, well, actually, no, I'm not going to bring up his name and everything, but there's like mm. some synchronicity there. But mm. basically didn't work out. And then kind of like he just like ghosted at me right before the whole COVID thing. And he had mm. flew across the country to come visit me and then just stopped talking to me. So I was left alone in my room and then I look in my closet and there's the ant costume and Mm. I was like well I guess I'm gonna put this on (laughs) (laughs) and I started putting it on and I was still working and I was just like I would take my lunch breaks and I would do this like crazy dancing like kind of like ecstatic dancing and Mm. then I started filming myself dancing and I was (laughs) like oh my god like I'm crazy but it felt (laughs) so good and it had these like googly eyes and it was just like I I never I released so much emotion and pain through that and Mm. it was actually kind of a fun exhilarating experience um So that's kind of how it started. And then I got really, really into meditation and breath work and I became a breath work teacher. Mm -hmm. And then I just started doing breath work every single day. And that just completely like changed my life. Um, I 
like it's like brushing my teeth. Like I won't go a day without doing it in the morning. Breath and work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, so I'm gonna teach that in in the academy of ants, and then um, yeah, so that that was like kind of that, and then you know I I took this business coaching program, and I was trying to figure out like I still had this music marketing business, and I was like you know do I want to continue with that, and then um, through taking this business course, I decided, you know, like, actually, I really want to help people, Mm -hmm. um, in the coaching industry and yeah. And so now I just kind of put together this program with like all the different, all the different things that have really helped me heal Mm -hmm. and to teach them to other people. And, um, yeah, I'm just really excited about it because I don't know, I've never seen anyone do this before, like use a costume. I know people do like body movement and ecstatic dance, but I've never seen anyone use a costume with it. And there's something really powerful about being like blind, like not being Mm. able to see yourself and moving that I feel like you can move in a way that's like, it's almost like you don't even recognize yourself, Mm. but like you release this like energy that like just needs to get out. So I get you. <laughs> I, I, I feel like, I, you know, I'm putting myself in the position of putting on an, an ant suit or any suit for that matter, you know, a, a yeah. mask, even a mask. Just a mask, yeah. You know, anything, anything that's, um, I think there's, there's two things that are happening there, uh, at, at least as far as I can tell. Like you say, you're, you're covering your eye, you're in, in the dark, right? There's, there's something that's happening there, but there's also the fact that you're putting on a different persona, whether it's the ant and whatever that it represents for you, for you, there's a whole backstory there, right? You created a, this concept for a, a film and then how that found its way into, you know, your actual life circumstances and you saw the parallels there. So putting on that costume and, and going through like that catharsis, that release of emotions, I imagine had a real metaphorical connection to, to you. And I imagine that it would be the same for someone else if they put on, you know, if they put on, uh, you know, a shark costume or, or whatever totally. the costume is, there's going to, it's that particular character is going to speak to people on an individual basis and, and probably allow them to move or, uh, experience emotions in a way that they are free to, that they wouldn't be were they not wearing a costume or they were, were they not, uh, you know, removed from their immediate surroundings by having their eyes co- uh, closed. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very, very powerful. And I could tell you a little bit about the panda costume because yeah. I feel like the panda is like my, yeah. my light energy, like my superhero. Mm. And then the mm-hmm. ant is like my shadow, like my dark, like anxiety oh, ridden. Yeah, so it's okay. kind of like I have these two identities mm. And, you know, I was thinking of like letting people pick any animal they wanted to do the shadow, but I just think there's something kind of powerful about like the ant, like Mm -hmm. being the shadow and like letting anyone, anyone can pick their like superpower animal, but the, I don't know, I just like ants, like I was just reading about them and like, they're like 50 times, like they can lift 50 times their strength and they're like Mm -hmm. together as a community. And there's even a community on Facebook of like 2 million people that are like pretending to be ants. And yeah. No kidding. No, no, I'm in it. It's hilarious. People just (laughs) post ant memes and they're like lift for the queen. And it's like, and I'm just like, people just want to get their mind off. Like, you know, whatever. Uh, But it's, it's, it's pretty goofy, but, Mm. um, the panda. So I can just show you. Yeah, I have it right here <laughs> in the back. But this is the the panda mascot. I have the full wow, full body right here. Um, I can put it on later if you want. That's it's so pretty, good. It's, I have a whole Instagram for it. It's it's Love quite it. <laughs> it's quite goofy, but yeah. That's awesome. So I've been doing the panda. Ooh, twelve years now. I started when I was nineteen. Mm-hmm. So, um, I got that one as a joke and there was like an episode of Jackass where everybody ran through the mall in panda suits. I just thought it was so <laughs> funny. Yeah. And I'm from near San Francisco and mm-hmm. moved to San Diego, like didn't have any friends. And I was just like joking with my friend and I was like, well, I'm just going to buy a panda suit and <laughs> I'll make friends that way. And it worked. They like started showing yeah. up at parties in a panda suit. No kidding. Like, like, oh my God, there's a panda here. And I was like, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, 
Yeah. So anyways, interned at a radio station and they were doing an interview with the Flaming Lips. It's a really cool uh, band. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. heard of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the manager came by and she was like, do you want to dance on stage with them in your panda suit? And I'm like, yeah, duh, <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> so they put me up and it was 20,000 people at this concert. And I get up there and I was just like, whoa, like this is what it feels like to be a rock star. But I have no talent. Like I can't sing or play an instrument or I just don't mind sweating <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so mm. I got up there and it was just like this magical experience. And then I just started bringing it with me everywhere. And um yeah, I like started crowd surfing in it. And I, you know, I been on stage with Snoop Dogg. I did a, a European crowd surfing tour and went to the Rolling Stones concert. No I did way. all this cool stuff, but I had this, I had this other Instagram for the panda and mm-hmm. I, I had such a hard time with vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I worked past that, but like I used this panda mascot to like write these like really vulnerable shares and post. And like, I felt like people didn't know who, it was me, even though some people did, but like, I would like write this and it it just felt like, oh, I can truly share how I feel with the world when I'm hiding behind this mask, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, it just gave me that like extra like power kind of. Um, so that was just like super, super cool. And then, um, this past year, I kind of announced that, like, I was the panda. And, like, a lot of people already know. They were just like, we know Rachel. <laughs> I was just like, well, it was a big deal for me. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> so that was just, I don't know. There's just something about wearing a mask that I think, like, it, it really does empower you. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. <sighs> That is a really cool story. <laughs> the, <laughs> the fact that you got to crowd surf, that you, you got to go on tour crowd surfing with some of the big, biggest bands on tour is, is a testament to, like if we take it all the way back to where that started with, you moved to a new town where you didn't know anybody and you, you did something which I don't think a lot of people would do, which is stand, stand out in a way that made you feel like, good you know is authentic to you like nobody else would go out and get a panda suit and, and show up at parties that were very few people i imagine yeah. but you you did it because it felt good for you and i think that that's from what i gather from from your work with clients now and, and what you're doing this transcendence from the music industry to uh spiritual and fun spiritual what do you call it fun spiritual coaching or spiritual fun coaching spiritual fun coaching there spiritual fun coaching yeah. yeah like that that transition into spiritual fun coaching um i feel like you're giving people that same that same experience in their own way which is the like this this uh this pass to be themselves in whatever way that shows up is that am i getting that right absolutely i felt like that was what Wayne Coyne from the Flaming Lips did for me. Like, he's mm-hmm. just cr- insane. Like, he's mm-hmm. crazy. <laughs> and I was like, if he can do it and, like, mm-hmm. be successful and have all, like, it was just, like, this, like, light. Like, I'm like, oh, it's okay to be weird. And, mm-hmm. like, people actually can embrace your weirdness and your strangeness. Like, you don't have to, like, fit into this mold of, mm-hmm. like, being like everybody else. I mean, if that's what feels good to you, like, you know, but I just always have felt like a little bit of, like, an oddball, like, a little strange. Like, I don't know. It's just, like, I've always been a little weird. And mm-hmm. so it, it, I think being that panda was just, like, this, like, oh, I can be weird and people love it. And mm-hmm. it's just, like, also I just love making people laugh and, like, smile. <laughs> so it's, like, you know, when you're in a panda suit, like, you could be, like, making coffee and people think it's so funny. <laughs> I'm like, wow, yeah. I'm a comedian. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh no. Oops, That's I dropped awesome. my purse. Ooh. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, ah. like, it's like, what? You know, it's That's like, awesome. it just, yeah. So. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so when you, you made this switch, well, actually, you know what? Let's go back to 2020, the start of 2020, because there are a lot of changes for you personally from what yeah. I gather. I mean, there's a lot of changes globally, you know, everybody had their, yes. their life kind of turned upside down, but, but that is, that was a transition period for you from the music industry to what you're doing now it was the inception of this work that you're doing with your clients now to, to be, uh, to have spiritual fun. Mm-hmm. What, what was that process? How did it unfold? And I imagine that it probably wasn't smooth sailing right at the start. 
Um, yeah, like, well, the thing is, I still have the music thing. And there's something that I want to bring to the table with that, that I can mm-hmm. talk about after. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. Because mm-hmm. um, I felt, I felt like going into this industry, then I felt like, well, there's something missing. Because mm-hmm. like, my heart is in the music. But then it's also in helping people and coaching them and helping them just become happier and finding ways to do it that are healthy. Mm-hmm. But the transition, well, like it started off, I was like 2020. I think everybody in 2020 was like, this is going to be my year. Yeah. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> like I was like so excited. And um, I had, you know, some clients for my music blog marketing thing I, I was working with the venues around town and promoting their concerts so i got some like bigger names like live nation and oh, house wow. of blues and wow. some of the bigger venues to pay me to um market their concerts so i was just at that point like i was also working for a web company doing some seo stuff so i was like mm. just at the point like i saved up like ten thousand dollars and i was like okay i gotta get like one or two more clients and then like I'm out, you know, Mm -hmm. but I was just like waiting a little bit longer to like have a nice cushion for myself. And then, um, March hit and that guy came, we saw Tame and Paula together. And like, it was funny because he came and I was going to quit my job right before he came. And then he came and I was like, okay, I'm not going to quit my job. And then the weekend after the world shut down and I lost Mm -hmm. all my clients. Like everybody was like, sorry, there's no concerts. Like we can't pay you to promote. Um, so I was just like heartbroken, Mm -hmm. um, in all the ways, (laughs) my job, the guy, I'm just like, ah, (laughs) why me? (laughs) Like so, so much victim mentality, you know, um, which I understand, but it's also like, it's good to be in that space and then Mm. be out of it. And then you can like look at yourself with compassion. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so that all happened. Then I stayed at the, you know, my job for until July, I'd say. Um, and then I, I got into breath work. I believe I started the program in June. I started it in June of last year. And then, um, and then once I started doing the breath work, I felt like everything in my life just started like changing. And mm. then I just became really, really confident. And I was just like, well, I don't want to do this job anymore. And the universe was like so good that they like ended up laying me off because they found somebody else and I trained them. And I was just like, whew, unemployment. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I can still pursue my passions and have mm. some like support. Mm-hmm. So that was like really nice. Um, mm. And... Yeah. And then, yeah. So I guess like now I'm just kind of, it's new, but I, I feel like I just got hired to teach meditation through another, mm-hmm. another company. And I've been getting really, really positive responses on the meditation that I've been teaching. Mm-hmm. So I think in the beginning it was very, it was very shaky. It was kind of like, should I be doing this? I don't know. Am I good at this? Like I want to help people, but it's like mm-hmm. such a new thing. And then finally, like, I taught a couple workshops and like just the people's response, like, you know, there's nothing better than hearing from some, hearing from somebody that you're helping with like experiences that you went through. And they're just like, someone told me they were crying tears of joy Mm -hmm. and like all this. And I'm just like, ah, like that feels so good. Like, I feel like that's, that, that is so much more powerful than like, you know, getting $500 $500 from a company and being like, Oh, I promoted your concert. Like, yeah. and we, we got, you know, like that's cool. Mm-hmm. It's great, but it's like, you know, um, mm-hmm. having real yeah, impacts. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you, when you mentioned this idea of, uh, going from like being laid off and then having this opportunity to, it's scary, but having this opportunity to, lean more into this area of your life that you feel authentically drawn to, to pursue that fear starts to lead into joy and happiness and excitement. And I can't help but think about the work that you do and especially putting on a costume, right? Someone who just, who, someone who's kind of locked into this, the, 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 the normalcy of their job and the normalcy of kind of just being a normal human being out in their career and, and friend space to be given the permission to, you know, be weird, you know, and like mm-hmm. express themselves authentically. That could be really scary at the, at the outset, but just as your process of, of leaning into your passion, 
is scary at the start. It starts to morph into excitement and happiness mm. and joy. And I feel like it's the same thing with this whole process for the individual when they're given permission to, you know, put on a costume or uh, be just be, you know, for lack of a better word, ridiculous, but exactly. express themselves authentically. That yeah. fear transmutes into excitement and joy, I imagine. Absolutely. And I think it's like taking baby steps is really good, you know, because mm -hmm. it's like starting small. Because I think if you go, I guess like, I think one of the biggest fears is judgment, you mm -hmm. know, where mm -hmm. you're afraid Definitely. of what other people are going to think. Mm -hmm. And I felt so kind of blessed in 2020 because anything goes. <laughs> I was like, yo. So I was yeah. like filming myself dressing up in this ant suit and I would just go on Instagram live and be like walking around the park in this like ant suit, which <laughs> I can, I can show you. It's right over there. But I was these big googly eyes mm -hmm. and literally like people would just be like riding their bike behind me and I'd be like <laughs> dancing and then yeah. I'd take it off and I'd be like, nobody cares. Like mm -mm. we're so concerned of what other people think that we, 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 are so afraid to truly show who we are. But in reality, it's like people will maybe point and laugh for a second and then they'll go back to thinking about all the things that they have to do in their day and their mm -hmm. own anxiety and their fears and their worries. And like, you know, they're not gonna remember. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, if you spend your whole life stopping yourself from truly showing who you are, you're gonna like hold these like you're going to live in fear and you're going to actually have more anxiety and stress and you're going to probably hold it in your body mm -hmm. um, than if you just did the thing. Um, but yeah, I think just like do, t taking baby steps. Like mm -hmm. I have um, – have a lot of goofy things. I also have like a, <laughs> a cone head, like, uh, you know, like the, the, the movie Conehead. The movie? <laughs> you never seen Coneheads? You know no, no, of about? course I have. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I so exactly. I have like Dan a cone head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, it's uh, in my drawer. I'll, I'll grab these things. But I have a cone <laughs> head and I, this was like testing me because mm. I was like, oh, like this is a little weird. But I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. But I wore it to the yeah. grocery store when I went to Trader Joe's and I was like in mm. line, just wore the cone head. And I was like I looking around. At first I was like on my phone. I was like, oh my God, this is like pretty weird. <laughs> Like, mm. I'm just wearing a cone head with a mask and I'm like, <laughs> um, but then like I got off my phone and looked around and like nobody was looking at me. I'm sure they were. They probably just weren't looking when I was looking. But then I went into Trader Joe's and like four of the employees were just like, yes, like, thank you so much. You, make, you made our day. Like, are you a yeah. cone head right now? Like, what are you doing? Like, it was just like, you know, it's like people need more. Mm -hmm goofiness like totally. everyone's just like oh like they're just so stressed about life and it's like well there's always going to be things that are going to stress us out mm -hmm. but like i don't know it's just like worry about it when it gets there don't like spend your totally. whole life worrying about you know am i going to be able to i don't know whatever it is that you're worried about but yeah as you're you know this this idea of spirit uh I don't know why I get it wrong. Spiritually, spiritually fun, fun spirituality, spiritually yeah. fun. You can say whatever you want. I just made it up. <laughs> I like it. I, I just, I, I'm, you know, I have a hard time forming words. <laughs> so okay. spiritual fun. So yeah. you going to Trader Joe's in a cone head costume or dancing in an ant costume or crowd surfing in a panda suit <laughs> is. No one's ever said that in one sentence. <laughs> is so much closer to whatever spirituality is or whatever connecting with spiritualism is than putting another few numbers in a spreadsheet or, uh, you know, being on a conference call or, um, you know, commuting to work. Like these things that we, uh, where I'm, what I mean by that is, is the ridiculousness of this is the bridge to that authentic self, is the bridge to that, communion with spirituality, wh whatever you decide that word means for you, it, it's, it is the polar opposite of showing up to work every day in a suit. It is the polar opposite of, of, um, you know, making sure that your taxes are done on time. It is the polar opposite of, uh, you know, sitting eight hours in a chair in, in front of a computer. It's not to discount that, that is a, you know, that can be a part of your life. Career is important, of course. but, but the, the bridge to that part of life, it feels like is shut off for so many people 
precisely because the work that is easy if you let yourself do it, which is being ridiculous, which is allowing yourself to have fun, which is allowing yourself to express yourself however you feel in the moment, is exponentially more frightening for people than it is to live an entire life confined to that image or that paradigm that they feel like they're supposed to conform to. It's so, it's, it seems so simple when we talk about it, but it's so scary to begin the process. How would you, for someone who, who like thinks about the answer, go, oh, man, I, I want to go down to the beach and like, you know, just walk around and dance to, to, to some tunes in a, in an ant suit or like be ridiculous at Trader Joe's yeah. in some crazy costume. They want that. They know that, that, that sounds ridiculous and fun, but it's, scary as it, yeah. you know, it's understandable. What is, uh, how do you suggest people start to entertain this idea? What you, you mentioned baby steps or small steps. Mm -hmm. What are those small steps? Yeah. Um, well, I think it's just slowly starting to break the pattern of your day. So, mm. um, also like I, I know like a lot of times, like say you're really afraid of, Hmm. Like, I, I guess this would be easier to do if we were like, could be around like people, mm -hmm. but like, I don't know, like if you are around somebody that you think is like really judgmental to just like on purpose, like spill your coffee in front of them <laughs> or like get an answer wrong on something when yeah. somebody asks you something really simple mm -hmm. and like, say it's your parents and then you just say the answer wrong on purpose and then <laughs> feel how they react to you. Mm -hmm. Like thinking you're stupid or you're, you're not going to get it right. Mm -hmm. And then being like, Oh, that wasn't so bad. Like, <clears throat> like do, mm -hmm. do things on purpose. Like that you like some, I guess if judgment is what you're afraid of, go somewhere you, where you think you are going to be judged and do something that's not so extreme, but something mm -hmm. slight. Like, um, I don't know, like where you're, wear your t-shirt backwards all day or something mm -hmm. like that. And then, and then I bet you no one's <laughs> going to say anything. And then maybe somebody will say something and then you'd be like, Oh, whatever. Like, you know, it's not that <laughs> big of a deal, but you could start like that. Like I'll have some exercises in my program for people. Yeah. We're going to go through like a whole thing on building confidence and Love releasing that. judgment. But I think, yeah, just starting small or going to Starbucks and like ordering something where it says it's like sold out and you can mm -hmm. be like, oh, <laughs> I want the caramel frappuccino. Like we're all out. And you're just like, oh, OK. Like it's just like, well, that's yeah. more like overcoming <laughs> just, something, like just purposely doing like little mm -hmm. things to and then because with that, you're going to start to feel how it feels to be like rejected or, or mm. to be judged. And yeah. you're like, this is the feeling. And then if you can overcome that feeling, then you're like, oh, I'm more powerful than this feeling. And then mm. you can begin to do bigger things. Mm. And then at some point, you just don't care. <laughs> you're mm. like, well, whatever. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah. It's, uh, I had Leo Venus on uh, a few, like a week ago, and he... Um, he does cognitive behavioral, I get this word, one wrong all the time too. He does cognitive behavioral therapy and he uh -huh. talks about exposure therapy. And it's, yeah. it sounds like it's, it's, that's what you're talking about, which is this idea of, okay, the, the goal might be to feel free to express yourself in whichever way you feel in the moment. And that's a, that might be too tall of an order right now. So what's yeah. a small thing that I can start with today and being, being, um, intentional about it, like starting the day with an intention. Okay. What's the, what are the situations I'm probably going to encounter today? I'm going to Starbucks probably later to get a coffee or I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to see my brother for lunch. Uh, th those are opportunities where I might look for an uncomfortable, uh, a comfortable way to start being uncomfortable and to, exactly. Uh, yeah, I love that. exactly. Um, and it gets easier. It's like, it, it wasn't like I came out of the gate, like just, you know, I used to be very afraid of what people thought of me. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I tried so hard to get people to like me. And then I realized that the people that I wanted to like me that didn't like me, I didn't like them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> like, why yeah. do I want these people to like me? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I was like, I didn't, yeah. And I think also like the older you get, like, at least for me personally, it kind of is like, you kind of, you know, the people, the people that matter are going to mm -hmm. accept you for who you are. Um, mm -hmm. except I know sometimes people have family issues, so they might still matter, but 
just yeah. love them and you don't have to talk to them about that kind of stuff. <laughs> you're like, oh, <laughs> my mom and dad, <laughs> my aunt now, they're like, oh, why did we help pay for your college? <laughs> Been a panda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, no. <laughs> uh, they say they say your uh, your vibe attracts your tribe, right? So um, if you if you are expressing yourself in a way that feels good for you, I imagine that, like you say, if if you if you try to impress everybody, the people who m- might end up actually being impressed, or you you find out that they're not the people that you want to be surrounded by to begin with. But if you if you focus on what makes you happy, if you focus on what Make, brings you joy and allows you to express it into the world, the people that are going to respond to that. And, and, and I imagine like the, I always think about this in the way, like a personal trainer, right? Years ago, I was talking to my personal trainer friends and we were all independent personal trainers sitting around in the same, uh, like the uh, entrance way is where we hung out and talked. And technically we were in competition with each other, but the reality was that all of us had different personalities and someone who bought training from me, bought training from me because they liked me or they liked, you know, the other trainer, they bought training from them. It's because their personality matched up with, with that person's personality. And I feel like it's the same instance here where if you learn, if you proactively engage in these uncomfortable situations in order that you can start removing the shells that are keeping your authentic self in so that you can express it more, then people are going to start to see you for who you are, see the energy as it's authentically expressed. And the people who are most likely to respond, I just, I'm just guessing, but the people who are most likely to respond are the people who you want to be surrounded with because they're going to accept you for that. But also they're going to want to want you to express more of that. Cause that's the whole reason they're, you know, your friend in the first place at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. You couldn't have said it better. Um, but yeah, your vibe attracts your tribe and it's Mm. like, yeah, I just feel like don't like not like it's liberating also to truly Mm. be yourself. Mm -hmm. And, and then, you know, like I think when you are trying to be something that you're not, and then it doesn't turn out the way you want, then you have so much like, Oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. But when you're truly authentically, like this is who I am, this is me. And then it doesn't turn out how you want. You're like, well, it, you don't have the same regrets, the same fears, the same things, mm. because it's like, you're not trying to be something that you're not. You're like, this is just who I am. Like you're fully expressing mm. yourself. And I feel like that's the whole thing about spirit, spirituality and spirit is like, spirit is in all of us. We all have like our unique spirit, our unique mm. soul, whatever you want to call it, higher self, you know, it's in all of us. And I feel like, I don't know. I just think honestly, like kind of the goal in life is like breaking away all this stuff that stops us from really truly expressing who we are and what we're supposed to do here. Mm. Um, Cause we all have this like blueprint or whatever, or something that we're supposed to be here on, on earth to, to like express ourselves, And people just mm. like, don't want to express themselves um, because of fear or judgment or, rejection or all those things. And so I just kind of want to make it fun for people to get past that so they can actually express themselves however they are supposed to. And like yours is going to be so different from mine and anyone Mm -hmm. who I help, they're going to have their own unique expression, whatever it is. Um, But yeah, I just want to help people so they can like feel powerful and connected and express themselves fully and not be afraid of you know, the things that we all are afraid of, or at least have tools to overcome it when it comes yeah. up, because it, it's going to come up. So that that's a perfect uh, segue into another part of this that you're very passionate about, because you work in a one on one manner in a group setting with clients um, mm-hmm. to coach them to, to express themselves and to be silly and to get more fun out of life there's another part of this for you as I understand it, which is coming from the music side of things. You're really big into, um, enjoyment of music through festivals and like the community aspects and, mm-hmm. and expressing yourselves in those situations. And I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I, I feel like you, a passion of yours is helping people enjoy those situations the way the the most authentic way that they can from a place of confidence from a place of of getting past these um 
you know, feeling the feelings of, uh, well, I'll just let you speak to it. it the, the festival part side of the things that the, these music fests and showing up authentically and being silly and, and, and expressing yourself the way that you want to express yourself. Where's the passion there for you and how do you help facilitate that for people? The passion in the festival aspect of things or just the, of, of being, um, are you just saying like the, the music as aspect of what I'm doing kind well, of? Or the you, you, yeah. The community side of things, I guess, like you, you spoke, uh, you, you talked about how you, um, like you, the community aspect of festivals, a, a big part of that is fun and, and enjoying the music. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah. along with that, it can be maybe not the most healthy endeavor or it can be, you yes. know, there can actually be some safety issues there too. Yes. Um, so some of your work, as I understand it, is also helping people enjoy those moments, enjoy those situations in a healthy way, in a way yes. that's true to themselves. Uh, what, uh, c- could you speak on that? Could you um, uh, yeah. expand on well, that? Well, I guess um, to be completely like transparent, like a lot of people at music festivals do drugs. Mm-hmm. Like that's just, it, it happens, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I even have experimented in dr- with drugs in the past. And mm-hmm. I think one of the reasons that I did it was because I always felt like I didn't fit in. I always mm-hmm. felt like a, a misfit. Nobody understands me. Mm-hmm. I'm so strange. And like, it's almost like this like escapism where you mm-hmm. can like escape reality and like go to this other place. Um, and I, that was like one of the places, like not, not doing drugs, but I didn't do that much, but it was just like at a festival or at a concert, I was like, okay, these people are also a little like mm-hmm. odd and weird and we <laughs> can all kind of like, we all like this music and mm-hmm. we understand each other or people dress up silly and, you know, so I really just want like for people who are feeling, um, I guess like feel like, Hey, like, I don't know where I belong right now. I feel a little, I'm a little goofy. I'm a little strange. Like, I think like a lot of people are just kind of like lost. And I really, um, I want to teach them the breathwork practices Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. I feel like that, that has just like changed my life. Like I used to be kind of a big stoner and I like barely smoke anymore like nothing wrong with it but I just like Mm -hmm. I felt like I did it because I had anxiety Mm -hmm. and I was like oh like I had so much emotion and feelings and thoughts and I that would just calm me down but I also feel like I don't need to be calm (laughs) I have this energy and I can Mm -hmm. use it for good so I think it's Mm -hmm. like people figuring out how to channel whatever it is they have inside of them to their Mm -hmm. purpose and so um I, actually, Academy Advance it hasn't started it yet, so um, it starts next month. It's, oh, nice! Um, March eighteenth. So if anybody's interested in enrolling, um, yeah, I'm super super excited about it. Yeah. Yeah, but um, yeah, so I'm going to teach like six, six different breathwork practices, and I think just like just helping people do all the things kind of we talked about. There's going to be confidence building. We're going to have weekly dance parties. We're going to do embodiment. <laughs> um, you will get a costume. And so Love we it. are going to do some shadow work. And yeah, so I think just like a lot of it is, it, it comes from not being able to face your demons, I think. Mm. Um, and yeah, I, I, I mean, I guess I could go a little bit into it, but um, I mean, a lot of it comes from your childhood, you mm. know, I think. Um, mm. I personally had some stuff in my childhood. Um, I'm not going to say anything bad. I love, I love my parents dearly, but I did have some, some stuff that happened in my childhood that, you know, made me feel unworthy, made Mm. me feel like, you know, I love unlovable, like just things that, you know, like going back and realizing it, like, you really have to kind of like face that and mm-hmm. be like, okay, this is why I feel this way. And then I think once you know that you can like, I'm going to include some meditations on like healing your inner child, but it's really like using your own love and yourself to, to fill up that love, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. That's uh there's a, um, a concept of radical self-acceptance where mm-hmm. you uh, like, you doing the work through meditation or, or, you know, whatever, whether it's movement, 
using that as a bridge to realize that you're, you are perfect the way you are currently. It doesn't mean that you can't have aspirations for the future, but that love that so many of us seek outside, we can start giving it to ourselves in the immediate now, right? Like we can start to Absolutely. fill that, fill that cup up. I love the fact that you're, you're bringing that into, to your work. Oh, uh, I think it's so important. Cause I think that's like one of the biggest things that that's like a lot of where our shadow comes from mm. is this, it's healing the inner child, that little, that little version of you that, you know, something happened to everyone as mm. a kid, mm. whether it was, you know, at the playground where you got bullied or your parent mm. didn't show you love or, you know, something happened to everybody. I know mm. like there's got like for kids, like <laughs> you're silly. Mm. <laughs> and I think also that, that may have stopped you from, continuing to be this playful, silly kid, because maybe Mm -hmm. you were told you were yelled at and you're like, you're not supposed to be doing that kind of stuff. And so then internally, like you take that on as adult and you're like, Oh, I'm not supposed to be silly. I'm not supposed to like, that's bad, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just, and and I heard, yeah, I read somewhere that they say like humans are the only mammal that need their parents for as long as they do Mm -hmm. so you know every other animal like within a year it's self-sufficient but humans like up until five years old they really need a parent to like love them and so if you don't have love from your parent um between the ages of one and or when you're born to five then you start to like internalize unworthiness and like Mm -hmm. shame Mm -hmm. and so I just want to help people like get past that, mm-hmm. but look at it. It's kind of heavy. So look at it in a silly way where it's mm-hmm. like, okay, we're going to dress up like ants now. We're going to, it's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And, and I think I, the, I love the, 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 how you're going after this. I don't think I've ever come across anybody who does this stuff the same way that you're doing, which is getting people to embody it, getting people to, you know, have fun with the, something that can be as, as, you know, as challenging and traumatizing, sc- traumatizing and scary as, as it can be, but doing it in a, in a, in a, not a lighthearted way, a fun way, but even, even I think more effectively being somatic with it, you're dressing up, you're moving, you're dancing. And, and, you know, we can read a hundred self-help books and we can contextualize this, you know, these ideas about why we might be a certain way or why, why we might not do something, but the subconscious, the, the deeper part of ourselves, they don't respond to just reading, you know, it's not an information problem. There's enough information out there for all of us. We can read a hundred books. That's not going to be the, the difference maker, the difference maker, the way that you communicate that knowledge to your deeper self, the part that needs the healing and, and, and is going to benefit from from moving into the, you know, the next area of, of personal growth that's done through story. It's done through mu- a movement. It's done through music. It's done through things like breath work, like you teach. And uh, it sounds like you're really bringing all of these things together in a way that communicates this, these tools and this knowledge to the place that is actually going to affect the change. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm hope so. I'm like very excited because mm. I feel like there's so many coaches out there and it's like, you know, looking at them and what they're doing. Mm. And I'm kind of just like making this my own thing, Mm. but I feel like it's going to be really powerful because it's been so powerful for me Mm. and I'm a big personality. So I'm like, well, (laughs) it can heal me. I know it can heal you. And I am going to do this really fun thing. Um, I'm super excited about this. I'm still, I'm like 80% sure that, this is going to, well, it is going to happen, but, um, I'm, I'm waiting on like a, a yes from a, a band to play, oh, but we're nice. going to do like, um, a, a dancing with your demons and I'm going to mm. have everyone put their ant suit on. And then I, I maybe have this drummer from like this pretty big rock and roll band going to play. So I think that would be really cool because mm. yeah, it's like, I don't know. I feel like why do people like rock and roll? It's like, cause you're yeah. kind of angry, mm-hmm. kind of pissed off. And I'm like, why are you so pissed off? And I'm like, what happened to you? But like, let's embrace that and love it. And then mm-hmm. it's like, cause it's not all sunshine and flowers all the time. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, it's great when it is, but like the darkness is going to come mm-hmm. and you have to be like, okay, like 
let me learn to love this part of me and then know that like the light is still on the other side and I don't have to go towards these bad old habits mm. that I had, you know, let me just look at myself and maybe people will start just dancing in their air suit and that's totally healthy. They'll probably like sweat off some extra pounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then they'll go to you for personal training. <laughs> like, man, I look good. <laughs> I want to look better. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't say enough how much I love that idea of getting in a costume and dancing. I mean, I know for myself, like, I'm just putting myself in, in, the sh in these shoes here. Right? Like I know from my own experience, with when it comes to dances for guys, I think it's, this is obviously a broad brush to paint this with, but I think for guys, it's, it's even more so this fear of embodying emotion through dance or through like, mm -hmm. you know, cathartic movement or whatever, but putting on the costume, putting on a mask, it gives you that extra little permission slip. You know, it's like, oh, it's not me dancing. It's the end. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody really knows who you are. Mm -hmm. Let me just show you. Please. I'm just going to pull it up. <laughs> but I have a couple of costumes, but this one is, uh, it's like literally just googly eyes <laughs> <laughs> and like a body Love suit. It. I actually, that has paint on it. Cause I like paint it this, I went to the mm. forest and I was like painting in the costume. I have a couple suits cause <laughs> Good, I'm dirty, but um, <laughs> it's like it's. I, I'm just gonna like show you, just like putting on the head because it's so it's so <laughs> funny, you know. And that's the thing. So yeah. like, it's just like look at like this looks so goofy. I love it's it. just like <laughs> it has these like weird like little googly eyes. Yeah. And I don't know. I think that I don't know. People are people are too. They're too serious, especially when it comes to healing and doing mm -hmm. that work. And mm -hmm. it's like. You know, I don't know. I just want to make it a little bit easier for people or I think they'll never do the work. Mm -hmm. They'll just keep avoiding it. Well, you know, as, as you said, uh, it's often the inner child that's wounded. And if you want that wound to start healing, giving the inner child the ability to express itself through movement, through dance or song, whatever it is. And like being a child. And being a kid, <laughs> you know, being a kid, honoring the inner child. Yeah. Um, I love that. I, I also want to be respectful of your time because I realize that we're, you know, we're close yeah. to an hour. But um, this, so you have an eight week program coming up that's yes. like, I, I can't think of a, a, something better to recommend to anybody who wants, who feel like yeah. someone's listening to this right now or watching, watching right now and thinking like, Oh man, you know, I want to dance. I want to dress up. I want to be silly and, and ridiculous, but I just don't let myself be. This is an opportunity to let yourself, you know, open that, uh, at least a little bit, open that door and start being a little bit more silly. Yes. What, <laughs> what is this? Eight week? It's the, it's the, um, it's the eight week program that is currently available. And then there's mm -hmm. a, an academy that's coming up as well, or not the academy, pardon me, the, um, uh, there's another program that's coming up as well where, where you're going it more into like the music side of things, but. Oh no. So I just, right now I just have the academy. So okay, I just have gotcha. the, the academy of ants. That's the eight mm -hmm. week. And that's going to like entail everything. Mm -hmm. I'm working on some music stuff separately, but I'm, Mm, okay. Okay. Not okay. quite ready to talk about okay. it because it's not ready. So. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 let's talk about the, so so you have an um, the eight week Academy of Dance coming up or it's it's currently available right people can sign yeah. up for that right now yeah so I just I just launched it yeah. um, well I ha have a post I'm gonna do later but it's it's available mm -hmm. on my website um, it's the Rachel Frank Experience dot com mm -hmm. slash Academy of Ants mm -hmm. um, I'll drop the link and I actually have. <laughs> I made it. I did finish that short film that I was talking oh, you did. about. So that's on YouTube. I, I'll send it to you. It's just called oh, please. I'm, a, I'm an Ant. Um, Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. It's pretty goofy. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. That's so, so good. So I'll, I'll definitely put the link to that in the show notes so people can access it. Um, check out your website too, but also sign up to the eight week Academy events, you know, and get them, get their, uh, get their groove on with, with their, their ant suit and <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> do some cool. fun shadow work. Um, yeah. Never. Like, I feel like usually shadow work is so scary. So mm. let's kind of, yeah. Want to make it fun. A question I love asking people who are on Instagram, people who put themselves out there the way that you do, you know, through social media, is this often easy and I think it's probably even more so in your case, um, 
it's often easy to be misunderstood, right? Like mm. by the posts that you share with people, you, you try to get yourself out there in a certain way. And it sounds like your Panda account was a way that you could, that you felt even more uh, able to express yourself in certain ways that maybe the Panda, the Panda suit helped you express yourself through text in certain ways that you didn't feel, um, feel like you're able to in other, in, in other uh, instances. The question I like to ask is, how are you often misunderstood and what do you wish more people knew about you? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, Hmm. How am I misunderstood? Well, I think it's almost, it's almost like we, we feel like, I feel like how you view yourself is like one of the the biggest things. Mm. And I don't know. I just, I felt how that's oh my goodness I'm like so how, wait, how do I how do I feel I'm misunderstood what was the other second part what do you wish more people knew about you uh what do you wish more people knew about you mm. well I think I just have this like depth to myself that you know like maybe people just see me as like this fun happy person which I am like a fun happy person but I like I also have like this serious side like I, you know, oh, goodness, this is, this is, a, it's okay. So let's see. Um, my, I'm, I'm half Salvadorian, which I have like this Hispanic side to me and my dad grew up in El Salvador, but I always felt like people just looked at me at like this like blonde white girl. And I don't know. I just, I always just felt like a little, just like odd. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I never, it's almost like I, felt like out of place, like being human, which is mm. <laughs> like weird, but that's it, fair. But I feel that too. <laughs> but I think that's like why I like dressing up in these costumes. Like, mm. I think it's just kind of like, I don't know. I never felt like I fit like the nine to five job, like, mm. you know, dressing up in like a business suit and doing that. So I always kind of did something different. Like I, you know, then I ended up working in, at a music venue for a while, did the music stuff and doing the Panda and like, I don't know. I, um, Mm. Yeah, I mean, mm. this is like, I think this is like the hardest question I've ever been asked <laughs> because I think I'm like talking so much about it. And then I'm like, how do I even answer? How, how do I feel misunderstood? But I think the biggest thing is like, we, I think all we really want is community and connection. Mm. So we really just want to be understood. Mm. And I think that's why you really need to fully express yourself because Otherwise, you're just going to connect people on this surface level. And I find it very easy personally to make small talk and make a, like a little connection with somebody. But to have like really deep connections is like that vulnerability side, which I just like last year really, really worked when I healed my like I wouldn't say healed my inner child, but did a lot of work on it. Mm. Um, so I guess just like opening up to people to like the depth of like all of me versus mm. just like this multi, like just like this kind of like fun spiritual coach, spiritual fun mm. coach, music person. Uh, I think there's so many aspects of me and mm. that's why I like to dress up in the panda suit and the ant suit because it's like, yeah, I have anxiety. Yeah. I have a lot of self-confidence sometimes. Oh yeah. I like music. Um, you know, mm. and then sometimes I need to cry <laughs> or a journal. And, and I think it's like, humans have so many parts of themselves and we try to maybe just fit into like one part and mm -hmm. like I think just accepting all of you and if you accept all of you if you accept all of you then other people will start too but I think mm -hmm. we all kind of, a lot of us hide parts of ourselves because we're like well people aren't gonna like that um mm -hmm. you know and even on Instagram I don't show everything but I'm like working on it but um you know yeah. So <laughs> that's perfect. That's beautifully said. And, uh, so much truth to that. I appreciate you and taking out the time of your day to be yeah. on this podcast and so much, so much there, so much wisdom <laughs> and uh, lighthearted so wisdom. And, um, I really hope that, uh, you know, more people hear what you have to say and see what you're doing in your life, because it is, it's so refreshing to see someone give themselves permission to, have fun, express themselves, not 
brush everything under the carpet too. You're using fun and movement and dance and music to experience these challenging parts of life. And that way I can't think of any better way to, uh, to help people go through, you know, challenging moments in their life and look at the darkest parts of their, uh, you know, their person and their, their, their history than uh, through the work that you're doing. So I, I appreciate you. Ah, oh, thank you so much. This was so great talking to you. And yeah, I appreciate you too. So thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks again for checking out this episode of the Power Plant Body Podcast. If you enjoyed it, I'd be grateful if you left it a rating and review on iTunes, because when you leave it a rating and review, it really helps. It lets iTunes know, and they'll be more likely to promote it to others who would also benefit from hearing these conversations. And feel free to share this episode with people who you feel could also benefit from Rachel's insights into playfulness and authentic expression. Go check out Rachel on Instagram. That's at Rachel Frank, at R-A-C-H-E-L-F-R-A-N-K. And check out her website where she has some really great free tools like a free five-day meditation course. Her website is therachelfrankexperience.com. That's T-H-E-R-A-C-H-E-L-F-R-A-N-K-E-X-P-E-R-I-E-N-C-E dot com. If you'd like to reach out to Rachel for coaching and guidance to bring more play and happiness into your life, then feel free to send her a DM on Instagram, or she also has a link to her coaching consultation form in her bio. Don't forget to head over to powerplantbody.com forward slash free dash tools to get your hands on a free copy of the Goal Wheel PDF, along with tons of other free tools. I'm regularly adding new resources to that page to help you create the best version of yourself. So you'll definitely want to bookmark it. You can find me on Instagram at the vegan trainer. That's at T H E V E G A N T R A I N E R. And feel free to send me a DM if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes. Thanks again for spending some time with Rachel and I today, and I'll see you in the next episode.